Hello and welcome. I am Annette Reader from TheBiblicalNutritionist.com and today, again, we are answering your questions. The questions today are all about biblical diet and fasting. Two very important subjects, two very important subjects to talk about because they've been so misunderstood for years. And we're here to talk about it. I'm so excited that you've joined me. Please go ahead and hit the like, subscribe, the bell, you name it, you know how to do it, and so that way we can stay connected. Now, let's quickly go into question number one. Question number one, I want to learn the ideal diet is based on biblical proof submitted by Chrissy. Okay, I love those words, biblical proof. Well, I agree. I was tired of man's plans, which change every five years. Even the food pyramid was designed by marketers and not true science. The dairy industry paid a high dollar to have their products promoted on the pyramid. The grocery store is sold to retailers in blocks. If you want the end cap, you pay the highest dollar. The ideal diet is to read scripture with a new lens. It's like putting on a new pair of glasses. Pray for divine guidance. And when it mentions a food, then go back and read the 20 verses prior to the 20 verses after. So you can understand what is happening in that story. What is the true storyline? Now, many people will take Peter and the sheet and turn it into a barbecue menu. I see it more as sharing the gospel to the Gentiles. See what foods are listed as good for you, such as Genesis 1:29, and then determine what did Jesus eat? To me, that seals it for my preference as to what is good and what is not. Jesus has stories where he separated the good from the bad. Examples of a scorpion versus an egg. Well, scorpions are unclean, eggs are clean. And so then you have a harder issue is to how do I find healthy version of these foods in today's market? Well, that is where we seek out farmers, seek out farmers that can grow seek out farmers that can grow our own food or we grow our own food. God's word is not about fats, carbs, proteins, calories, and glycemic index. Science can be good and it can also be deadly. So let science confirm what scripture says is good, but never let science contradict the truth of God's word. No fat, low fat, no carbs, no bread, no butter, no, no, no. Well, from what I have shared here, there are three principles that we follow. Number one, eat the foods that God called good. In Deuteronomy, Moses shares pretty much a shopping list of eight foods, and they're waiting for them in the promised land. And, and he says that these are going to satisfy you. And then he says you're going to praise the Lord for the good land he has given you. If you eat the foods that God has given you, then like in Exodus, it says that I will not put on you any of the diseases that I put on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Second, eat the foods close to God's creation before it's been altered beyond our health benefit. In Leviticus, there's another grocery list. And one list is like, hey, these foods are clean and the others are unclean. And in the middle, it says, you know, do this. Don't eat the unclean because that's an abomination to the Lord. Grace does not cancel reality. Unclean is always unclean. Leviticus 18, 24, do not defile yourself in any of these ways because this is how the nations that I'm going to drive out before you became defiled. And number three, don't let any food become your God. Isaiah 58, it spells out the need for fasting. It helps us not to be dependent on food. The proof is in the word. It's living out our lives as Christ lived on this earth. Believe in the one true God, then I eat the foods that he designed for us, as close to his creation, and then finally, keep my heart set on him. I hope this helps because as you follow these principles, you're gonna see for yourself what God's word teaches and how health comes from just eating the foods that he created for us because he did design us in his image. Thanks for asking. Question number two. I need to learn about having a healthy relationship with food. This is submitted by Tammy. If you saw a child bothering or pestering another child, the best action is to separate the child causing the harm and ask that child, do you know what you're doing? And do you know why you're doing this? 
Many times, actually most times, it has nothing to do with the action of the other child. It usually stems from something else that's going on in their life. The same is true with you and your relationship with food. Step back. Talk to yourself from an objective place and say, you know, is food just food? Or do you understand that food can't hug you, it can't pay you, it can't love you, it can't marry you, it can't make you a person that you think you're not? Food is nourishment, and it can be used for fellowship. Yet good fellowship comes from knowing who you are first in Christ. Start by using the Hunger Satisfied Journal. It's in the Seven Steps book. It's in the 40-Day Transformation. Take those seven steps slowly. Let each step marinate in your heart and in your life completely before you move on to the next step. I have received so many testimonies from people doing just that, and they're losing four to 10 pounds just with the seven step program. The journal includes several elements to help you come to a place of food being in its rightful place, and then other areas of your life being in their rightful place. After the seven steps, move to the 40-day transformation. It's going to take you deeper into breaking free from any bondage with food. Learn to identify your beliefs. What do you really believe about yourself? I used to say, I'm just fat and ugly. What do you believe about God? I used to say, God can't help me. What do you believe about food? Food was my only, record, re, my only help. Write it down. And then look at those words. What do you want to believe about yourself? What is true according to scripture? What is true about food? What is true about God? Again, look at your words. A healthy relationship with food begins with a healthy relationship with who you are in Christ. If you don't know Christ as your savior, then you need to start there. And then pray for his guidance in helping you to discover what truly is bothering you. So why do you go to food to solve that problem? It's meant to be solved by going to God for answers. Oreo cookies may seem like a quick fix, and they are gonna stimulate your brain for a quick reward. And the Oreo company knows that. And then your brain is gonna seek the next quick reward. Oh, another Oreo will solve this problem. Yet God's love can do the same. When you reach for an Oreo, you're, you're stepping out, instead of reaching for the Oreo, step outside and just start singing at the top of your lungs a praise song and your brain is going to sense a reward and it's going to seek it again. Rewire your brain with who you are. Sing his praises, speak his word, tell of his greatness. This speeds up the transformation. Let food be food. Let God's word be your medicine. Thanks for asking. Question number three. I just joined the 40-day program. I guess I need to know how to stop my emotional eating. I struggle with that one. This was submitted by Cindy. Okay, this is same as just what I answered for Tammy. Food has been a reward for you. It has been a comfort. And we live in a society that has created this attachment. It's like an attachment syndrome, a food attachment syndrome. So that'd be FAS. And it's through ads. And these ads create billboards in our mind. Yet nowhere in God's word does it say to let food be thy comfort. Contrary, it says, trust in the Lord your God. Follow the same steps as I just shared with Tammy. Now that you're in the 40 day transformation, you have the tools to walk through this. Plus the 40 day transformation, it's actually yours for years to come. So go through this several times. Many people go through it several times just because every time you go through it, you're at a different place with God. Now, there are layers to wrong beliefs that we really need to peel away. And when that is peeled away, you're gonna recognize, oh, I didn't recognize, I don't remember that thought, but yeah, you're right, I do believe that. God's going to start working in your life in layers. If you're struggling and you're following the tools, then you're nearing a breakthrough. Many people say the harder it gets, the sooner you're getting to a breakthrough. Now, if you're at a, a wall, then you're up against the truth and you refuse to go further, you're not gonna get that breakthrough and be set free from food. 
When you do get that breakthrough, food will no longer have you on speed dial. You'll be able to walk into any situation and enjoy your friends without thinking about the food being served. Food will be the last thought in your day, not the overwhelming, consuming thought. Yes, it is possible. And God is able. And God is able to make all grace overflow to you. So that always, always having all sufficiency in everything, you may have an abundance for every good deed. 2 Corinthians 9.8. Question number four. I would like to learn how to fast correctly. Submitted by Cheryl. I love this. Let fasting be between you and God, not man and rules. That's number one. Study Isaiah 58. Let those words be a launch for your success in fasting. When did you last eat? When did you finish dinner? Let's say you finished dinner at 6 p.m. And then you're not going to eat breakfast or your first meal of the day until 8 a.m. Record this in your Hunger Satisfied Journal. That's a fast of 14 hours. Now give yourself credit for fasting 14 hours. No food, no drink except for water for 14 hours. Now you may have slept most of it, but that's okay. It's still a fast. It is a fast that God designed. In fact, he designed us to sleep to benefit the fast. Next, write your time of fasting in the daytime. When did you last eat? If you ate breakfast at eight, when did you stop eating? And then I want you to wait four hours before eating the next meal. That's another fast. Write it down, no snacking. Fasting is going without to gain within. Once you are comfortable with this understanding of fasting, let's take it to the next step. Use the Hunger Satisfied Journal and record all eating and all fasting times. Now in the 40 day transformation, I encourage you to fast three meals per week. Choose any three meals you want, any day, any meal. And I want you to do this for several weeks. Now write down in the journal how you feel. How'd you spend your meal time? Did you finish doing fun things? Did you do worship? Did you go for a walk? Did you learn a new Bible verse? Music is good, but I want you to see how scripture memorization is even better. Now once you have these three meals done well, I want you to change the three meals to different days and different times. The point is to teach you and your body that you can go without eating and I want you to learn how to enjoy it and see the benefits from it. Next, you would go into longer times. The idea is to do water fasting. Now I have a new course on fasting that is almost pretty much a college level course because it, it shares with you biblical teaching of seven different fasts. Now we're familiar with the Daniel fast, but there's an Esther fast, disciple fast. There's much more to learn. And it also helps you to understand what happens in your body when you fast, <laughs> plus a lot more information. So go check that out on our, resource, on our resources page or also on the page biblicalnutritionacademy.com. That's our academy where we teach you how to learn God's recipe for excellent health. So I look forward to seeing you there. Question number five, I started the 40 day fast. What do I do after this? Submitted by Tori. Well, I'm assuming you mean the 40 day transformation course. 40 day fasting, that's, you're gonna have to talk to God about that. I want you to just go through the 40 day transformation with calmness and let each step, not every day, but each step, master every step and then move on to the next step. Now, I want you to then personalize every step until you understand it and you've gained what you can through that. Now this course delivers the tools to be used for any situation in your life. If you have a new job, if you're writing a book, if you're disciplining a child, you're mastering your eating habits, all of these tools that were given you in the 40 day transformation, they work. They work for any situation in your life. So take your time. Now, if you need coaching, which most of us benefit from, then join the inner circle. And it's only open to those who have started the 40 day transformation. Even if you just buy it, you can join in the inner circle right away. Because there, because there you get to ask questions in a live setting and we get to talk through helping you make the changes that are going to stick. Thank you for asking these questions. They've all been really good and I'm so excited to be able to share with you here on YouTube and on podcast. Uh, remember, I am Annette Reader from the biblicalnutritionist.com. My husband's doctor was writing prescriptions faster than our hearts were beating with stress. Yet, could there be another way? Is there another answer? Well, that is when a friend suggested to me, Annette, go back into God's Word, start reading it differently, and start with the Daniel fast. Well, those words changed the trajectory of our lives. 
and 30 days later we were prescription free, 35 pounds lighter, combined total, lower cholesterol, lower triglycerides, and we knew that God had answered our prayer for greater health His way. Now, if you are praying for an answer on how to get started, I highly recommend the Daniel Fast. First, go to the biblicalnutritionacademy.com website, click on the Daniel Fast, and sign up. It's that easy. Plus, the link will be in the show notes below.